so we can easily grasp the role that the Higgs boson plays in everyday life since it gives my cat mass, for instance. But on a much larger scale, is it supposed to have played any important, particularly important roles in uh, cosmology, for instance, say with inflation or in other areas? Yeah, so, well, first of all, I have to say most of your cat's mass is not from the Higgs boson. Oh, really? Yeah. It's, so um, the most of the mass in an atom comes from the nucleus, which and most of the mass of the nucleus actually comes from the strong force. Um, so the, it's only the mass of the fundamental particles that come from the Higgs. So your cat would not be a cat if it wasn't for the Higgs. So it's still important, don't get me wrong. But um, because the electrons all get their mass from the Higgs. So, and if if the electrons didn't have mass, then atoms wouldn't hold together. So it's it's still vital. <laughs> don't don't worry, I'm not. But but it's interesting that most of the, the mass of the cat is actually in the protons and neutrons, and that's coming from the strong force. Okay. Okay. I need, um, this is, this is a good clarification, but the quarks get their mass from the strong force. No, sorry. I'm not sorry. Sorry. The quarks get their mass from the Higgs boson. Yeah. And then the quarks then are, are held together by the strong force. Yeah. And, but that and has a lot of binding energy. So, so the strong force, because it has energy, it adds mass. Yeah, basically that's right. Yeah. Okay. So then, no, that that's a really great important clarification. I'm cool. glad. Yeah. Um so and then you asked about cosmology. Um so I mean there are a couple of things there. One is yes there will, will have been some phase transition in the universe where which is the equivalent of the wine bottle, the marble in the wine bottle um cool, you know lo- cooling down. The as the universe cools down, this symmetry gets broken. So in the very early universe this broken symmetry that gives things mass that means that the Higgs field is everywhere, that's not the case in the early universe. There's so much energy that the, we're not in the ground state, so the, the symmetry is not broken, so everything's massless, effectively. Um, and at some point, as the universe cools, we go through a phase transition where the W boson, the Z boson, all the, the electron and so on, um, acquire their mass. That's very, very early on in the universe, and I'm not sure how much, I mean, it has to have happened, otherwise the universe wouldn't happen, but I don't think it's had much influence on the structure of the universe as we see it um, in terms of the the cosmological measurements that people make from things like the um, the James Webb Telescope or whatever at the moment. So um, the the other connection that, that may be there uh, is a bit more tenuous and speculative, is that you mentioned inflation. Inflation is also um, probably driven by a scalar boson, like the Higgs, and there may be. And there, and you asked earlier, is it the only one in in nature? Well, it's the only fundamental one in the standard model. But dark energy and inflation may also be due to something like this as well. And you have there are models where where they are due to scalar bosons. We don't know whether that's true. We don't know whether they're there. They're certainly not present in the standard model, but they may be present in nature. So one of the kind of more speculative and but interesting and not completely disconnected from observation and pragmatism is one of the areas of, of particle physics and cosmology is exploring whether there are really links between that. Now that we know there really is at least one fundamental scalar boson in the universe, maybe it's connected with these other puzzles. Um, there isn't a compelling, um, you know, neatly done up theory that joins them up, but there are various ideas around about how they might connect. Hmm. I'd like to go back to my cat for a moment. Yeah. Not not just because I find my cat interesting. You're very handsome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh but I, I'm now I'm curious now about where the mass in the cat comes from. So the fundamental particles that make her up get their mass from the Higgs boson. Yeah. Most of the mass you said comes from the strong force. Now is there also mass in the cat coming from, say, like the electromagnetic interactions in her brain, the very, very weak gravitational force that is also sort of binding her towards her center of mass? Are all of these 
interactions adding additional mass to the cat? They all, yeah, they all at some level contribute because in the end, mass and energy are the same thing. So anything which is, um, you know, they're, they're different forms of the same thing. So E equals MC squared, basically. <laughs> so so anything that um, the binding energy of the electrons around the protons also contributes positively or negatively to the mass of the cat. Um, the the any kinetic energy, any form of energy that the cat has will be contributing to the mass. Yeah. So. Mm. Um, yeah, so no, that that's that's what's. I mean, the the way you can I I think of it with the the protons and the neutrons, for instance, is you have three quarks, which if you, they're free mass, the the mass they get from the Higgs is is made is a tiny fraction of the mass of the proton, um, but they're confined to a tiny space by um, the strong force, and because of that, they're vibrating very very rapidly within that space because their their momentum has to be very uncertain because their position. In, in terms of quantum mechanics, right? They're, what we're saying is their their wavelength has to be really small because they're in a small place. That means their energy has to be really high, and it's that energy that is giving the the mass to the proton, basically, um, via E equals m c squared. So if you think back to what I was saying about what we we were both discussing, um, wavelength and energy and how they're in, they're inversely related. And so small wavelength means high energy. The proton is really quite small. So to fit anything into that, then its wavelength has to be really quite small. And that means its energy has to be high. And therefore, by E equals MC squared, or if you like, M equals E over C squared, there's a mass term coming in there. And that's where most of the cat mass comes from. But that's true of any interaction. It's the strong interaction is particularly strong, as the name suggests. So that is by far the biggest contribution. But any any kind of interaction in terms of the forces or gravity or or electromagnetism will also have similar kinds of impacts on on the mass. They'll just be a lot smaller. The strong interaction is what dominates. This is obviously not news to you, but uh, it is fascinating to me just how much reality diverges from our folk intuitions. And this is just one great example of it, where for uh, thousands of years, probably since the beginning of humankind, at the most basic level, we've probably thought mass is just a function of volume and density, but it is really not this. I mean, that plays some role, yeah, yeah. but that's not fundamentally where mass comes from at all. The the the, the issue is, um, and this again, this is the, the map thing, right? The issue is once you go below the atomic scale, intuition is really a poor guide. <laughs> once, you're, mm-hmm. once you're in quant- in the world where quantum mechanics is relevant, our in- our intuition has evolved over um, the lifetime of the species to be incredibly good at uh, incredibly good guide to things we meet in everyday life. But once you get inside the atom, that's it's not applicable very often. And and right back to what you said at the beginning, it's unreasonable somehow that mathematics is. 